Tonight we are looking at two hipster pistols from a bygone era. The Beretta 92FS Brigadier and the CZ75B. Hold on to your ascots. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and I'll be your guide in pursuit of practical pistol proficiency. Tonight we are talking about two pistols that are a little bit long in the tooth. Neither one of these pistols has a rail or accommodations for optical sights, but they both have very devoted followings and are still quite popular in spite of these things. Now previously the CZ would have been thought of as being a value offering and up until a couple years ago, and this is 2020, the CZ was significantly less costly than a Beretta. But the Beretta since losing the contracts came down a lot in price. So this is available for about $650 if you can find it in the post COVID world. And this sucker is retailing right around $600. They are both double single action guns one has a safety decocker and one has manual safety only. They both weigh about 33 to 35 ounces, so they're very similarly situated. They both have removable grip panels. This has an alloy frame and this has a steel frame. But whether you select steel or alloy, either one of these frames is suitable to allow you to sneer in disgust at your friends using polymer guns, knowing full well that your preference in frame material makes you better than them. <laughs> The Beretta is made in Gallatin, Tennessee, handmade by Johnny B here on YouTube. Alright boys, here we go. I'm Hill Person Johnny. It unironically appreciates the taste of Budweiser and the music of Hank Jr. Change my direction. Lord, I guess I went and broke their family tradition. The CZ75B is made in the Czech Republic, and guys, if you're from the Czech Republic, write your own joke about your own stereotypes there. I don't know enough about Czech Republic to make funny jokes. So since this is the internet and we love to compare things, we are going to compare these things, and we're going to follow a format. Now, if you want to jump around, there will be time codes down in the description below, so you can jump to the parts that interest you. But the format we're going to follow is we're going to talk about the frames and slides, we're going to talk about the triggers, we're going to talk about the controls, we'll talk about the reliability, we'll talk about the maintenance, we'll talk about the aftermarket, and then we'll talk about the shooting impressions. Now I've recently posted a review of the 92FS Brigadier, so be sure and check that one out. And if you go way back in the day, you can see my review on the CZ75B, and I'm not going to encourage you to watch it because it's horrible. The production value is awful. It's just, just don't watch it. Both of those videos are available in the description, but don't watch the CZ75 one. So let's get started talking about the frames. The CZ75 frame is a full hand length. My hand does not hang out past the edge of the grip, which is typically what you'd expect. Whereas the Beretta, all of the 90 series Berettas have short frames that my hand hangs down past. That all said, I can still put good contact on the front strap of the gun through the three fingers you apply grip force with, so it's not that big a deal, but can cause some issues on speed reload. The Beretta grip is longer from front to back, so it's easier to find a home for your support hand if you are a large-handed shooter on the Beretta pistol than it is on the CZ75, which medium and smaller-handed shooters are likely to be more at home with due to the shorter grip length and the trigger reach being a little bit better for those types of hands. The Beretta has a traditional slide on frame design, whereas the CZ has a slide in frame design where the slide actually rides on rails inside the frame as opposed to over it. The grips that come on the Beretta are these rubberized Hogue wraparound style grips, which are actually pretty good. And the grips that come on the CZ75B are plastic and horrible. And I would love to tell you which one of these guns recoils softer using my Mantis X like I like to do. However, neither one has a rail so I have nothing to hang it off of, and that's kind of lame. 
But based on just the frames and grips alone, I'm going to give the check mark to the Beretta. Moving on to the slide, and this is where the hipster stuff really gets thick. The CZ has a short slide due to its slide in frame design, and there is very little to grab onto to do slide manipulations with it. However, if you manipulate from the front of the gun, it does have high power cuts, which make a nice place to manipulate from. The Beretta has this open barrel style design on its slide, so there's not really a great place to grab it at the front. Uh, and there are the decockers in the back, so neither gun manipulates particularly well based around the slide design. There are no front cocking serrations on either, which, awesome, I guess. But the Beretta does get added points because if you do manipulate from the front of the slide, you can potentially burn yourself on the barrel if you've been doing a bit of shooting. Whereas with the CZ, you can't burn yourself on the barrel very easily. It would really take some dedication. The three dot sights are changeable on both guns and the Beretta has good metal three dot sights right out of the box. The CZ has these weird sights that if they were plastic, I would say are as bad or worse than OEM Glock sights. So based on the sights alone, I'm going to give it to the Beretta on this one because the CZ sights out of the box are just kind of weird and not my favorite. Moving on to the trigger, let's talk about triggers. Both guns have a double single action trigger. The double action reach on the Beretta is a little bit easier, maybe based around the trigger shape. However, the pull is much more manageable in double action on the CZ straight out of the box. Both guns are comparably weighted on the trigger, so there's not really going to be a standout there. But based on the double action trigger alone, I would definitely give it to the CZ. Now in single action, both of these guns are going to have a little bit of slack to get to a wall. And then when you're on the wall, the CZ is actually going to have a good bit of creep. And you can kind of see the hammer wiggle there as I get on the wall there. So there's a good bit of creep in the CZ single action, and then it releases. Whereas the Beretta, when you get on the wall, it there's no budging. It's just right there. It is all the way there. And you can really prep the trigger quite well before it just releases very cleanly with very little over travel. So the single action, I'm actually going to award to the Beretta. Running through the other controls, and we've got the safety decocker to talk about, the slide release to talk about, and the mag release to talk about. So the CZ-75B has a safety that is only actuated when the hammer is cocked. You cannot activate the safety when the hammer is down as it is now. The safety is only going to be on the left side of the pistol for a right-handed shooter. So if you're a lefty, CZ thinks you should get bent. The Beretta is much more forward thinking and in 1975 came up with its ambidextrous decocker safety design so that lefties can feel the love of the Italians from back in the day. But the manual safety operation as mentioned on the 92 series is kind of weird. It'd be much better suited in a decocker format. So while I don't love the safety decocker setups on either of these guns, I will give it to the CZ. Moving on to the mag release on both of the guns. The mag release on the CZ, I have to break my grip just a little bit to get at and actuate, whereas on the Beretta, I really have to break my grip due to how thick the Hogue grips that come on it are. So in that format alone, the mag release is going to the CZ. Now, talking about the slide release, the slide release on the CZ is quite large. It is used to hold the gun together, and it's an easy to get your hand on it if you're building a high grip. Whereas the slide release on the Beretta is Perfectly sized and perfectly situated, it's just flat out better than what CZ is doing here. So I give this to the Beretta based on the slide. Talking about reliability, the Beretta has a direct feed system, so it can chamber basically everything. And because of the slide design, when it goes all the way to the rear, you've got about 270 degrees for brass to kick out. So it's very difficult for the slide to capture the brass and cause stove type type malfunctions. It cycles very light loads, it cycles very heavy loads. It's just honestly a pretty strong design, though it's standing alone in a field of closed top slides. I honestly quite like the way that the Breda slide functions. And because all of the weight is situated so low, it becomes a really soft shooter. The CZ is super reliable. It will cycle and run all day long. It is just a very well made gun. However, CZs and other Euro manufacturers are notorious for having short throats. 
So the CZ is only going to run like a top with ammo that it likes, and if you're reloading your own ammunition, there's a strong chance that you're going to end up needing to load shorter for the CZ. So both guns are probably 100% plus reliable, so I'm going to give them each a check mark. However, I'm going to give the Beretta a special check mark since it can eat any crap that you throw at it that might choke the CZ. Talking about the maintenance, and this is going to be on how easy is the gun to take apart and perform routine maintenance. I'm also going to speak to the armor level maintenance. So after about 10,000 rounds, both guns are going to need springs updated. So let's talk about that. On either gun, you're going to have to take the grips off. You've got two screws on the CZ-75 to remove and four screws on the Beretta. The Beretta grips are more stable and don't necessarily rock forward to back, but the CZ grips aren't hideously unstable either. Once the grips are off the gun, you'll have to drive out three pins on the CZ and changing the trigger return spring, which you have to do or the trigger will go dead and won't reset. Changing the trigger return spring, you have to hold your tongue a certain kind of way to make it happen. Uh, you can install it using a slave pin or needle nose pliers, but if it breaks and they honestly have a history of breaking on the range, if it breaks, you'll be changing it with pliers, and when you do that, you can potentially overstretch the spring and drastically shorten its service life, which isn't awesome. But if you install it correctly, they'll last 10 to 15,000 rounds. So just make the swap at around 10,000 rounds, and you'll have nothing but good times from the CZ. The Breda has one pin that you have to punch once the grips are off, and you can get it all the springs you need to change. Changing the trigger return spring in the Breda is way, way easier, and they don't really have the same history of breaking trigger return springs that the CZs have. So in either instance, you're going to need punches and an armor's block to maintain your fancy hammer-fired blaster. I've got links in the description to where you can get those off of Amazon or potentially Optics Planet. So in this instance, I have to give it to Glock, because perfection. I'm going to tell you about the shooting impressions, but first we need to talk about the sacred relationship between content creator and you, the subscriber. I make world-class firearms content for you here on YouTube. You watch these videos and contemplate your love of the old Smokey and the Bandit series. You get yourself one of those Trans Ams and you paint it, but rather than the Firebird on the hood, you're going to paint my logo. So as you go around town and drink all the gasoline from all of the gas pumps and leave clouds of rubber everywhere you go, the good people of your city will know of the good work we're doing here on the channel. If you're not into old muscle cars, that's fine, I guess. But I would appreciate you liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already and hitting the bell so you can be notified when new world-class firearms content is delivered. So seriously guys, YouTube is run off of likes and comments, activity on the video. So if you could just like and comment, I'd really appreciate it. If you enjoy me and want more of my content, there's a link in the description to my Patreon page where just a single dollar will get you access to three to five blog posts per week and a sneak peek behind the curtain for all of the videos that are coming. So check that out. A lot of people find a lot of value there. But now back to the show. Shooting impressions. Both of these guns are amazingly practically accurate. If you are someone who cut their teeth on a polymer striker gun, if you pick up either one of these guns, there is a good chance you're going to shoot them as good or better than your polymer guns. The CZs especially provide great ergonomic cues of how your hand is supposed to fit onto the pistol so that you can stabilize the gun well enough to pull the trigger straight to the rear. That's not to say that the Beretta doesn't also have great stylings and allow your hand to fall where it's supposed to be to get the trigger to go straight to the rear. It's just that the CZ is a little bit more intuitive along those lines. Shooting at a high level where you start to use the geometry and the traction of the pistol to make it stay flat, the CZ-75 does not have any checkering on the front strap or the back strap, and the grips themselves are quite slick, whereas the Beretta does have, at least this Brigadier has the finger grooves on the front which lock your hand in geometrically quite well, and along the back strap does have these vertical serrations, which is better than nothing, but it plants the gun in your hand, and as mentioned, the tacky rubber grips do provide pretty good traction. Around the back of the gun, the Beretta is just broader. It, it spreads the force of recoil out across a larger section of your palm. So the Beretta feels like a softer shooter. 
coupled with the mass of the Beretta, which is a high bore axis pistol admittedly, it just shoots more like a Glock or any of the other striker guns because all of the mass is below the center line of the bore on the slide. So the muzzle climb is very minimal. And because the Beretta is a falling locking block style action, the barrel is not mating up with the slide in some kind of way. So there's not like the hitch when the gun unlocks or goes back into battery as it relocks up with the slide. And to that point, the Beretta is just a softer shooting feeling gun. And by no means do I mean to say that the 75B isn't a particularly nice gun to shoot. Manipulations on both of these guns, because racking the actions is so non-traditional, is going to take getting used to. But once you've come up the learning curve on how to manipulate these guns, there's not really an issue there either. So picking a winner between these two based on the shooting experience of these guns, the double action is better on the CZ 100%. The ergonomics, I think some people will find to be more comfortable on the CZ. However, I prefer the broader grip and the longer trigger reach of the Beretta. I feel like it's a softer shooting gun. I like the single action trigger, the way it pulls better. The sights are significantly better than the CZ and the softer shooting experience due to the drop top slide is just generally better. So I'm gonna have to give the shooting impressions to the Beretta in this regard. So we've made it all the way through the guns. We've kind of totted up all of the totals and I've told you what my opinions on these guns are. I am curious what your opinions are. Knowing what you know about these pistols, which way would you go? Would you go with the Beretta 92 or the CZ75B? Sound off in the comments below and let me know.